So I've been asked to talk at the Blackboard and I, I'm quite happy about this and I hoped in particular that I would be able to get away with incomplete referencing because of that, but now <laughs> I've learned that it uh, will be recorded, so but I hope uh, <laughs> I'm not going to get into too much trouble. So I just want to show a small number of slides at the beginning and then maybe another small number of slides at the end because these are difficult to draw for me on the board. So there are at the moment some interesting um, tensions with the standard model in flavor physics. That's also not the first <laughs> time that this is the case, but maybe I talk. I mean, so I'm, I'm talking about the. Th so there seem to be a couple of them which uh, are both um, quite significant, and where at least the theoretical side of the systematic seems to be very well under control. So the first of these is uh, actually not the RK and RK star, but it's also called. An, it's also an R. It's RD star and R RD and RD star. So that is defined here. Ratio of branching ratios for B meson to D meson or D star meson. Uh, so these are the charm, charmed pseudoscalar or, or, or spin one vector mesons, and then uh, a tau and a, and a neutrino relative to the same uh, branching ratio for the um, same final state, except that we look at the muon or electron and the neutrino. And um, so the virtue of this, without not going to go through the theory, but the bottom line is that the theory error here is, is really uh, negligible given the current experimental errors. This is a two-dimensional plot. So here there's Rd, here there's Rd star. Uh, both of them have been measured by several different experiments and also in several different ways of reconstructing the tau. And that's the theory prediction. Uh, and that's the experimental world average. It's not the most recent experimental world average because there <coughs> is a new measurement from last as of last week. I'm going to have another slide on that. But basically what you see is that the RD star measurement here, the RD star value is quite a bit above uh, the standard model prediction and also the RD value is above the standard model ex prediction. Um, it's a tree level standard model decay, so that is not really the place where we would have thought that new physics and flavor physics would show up. It means that any new physics effect here would have to be either come from relatively light particles and or from strongly coupled new physics. Um, in any case, the combined significance, uh, it's, that's a sort of proper, uh, very thorough statistical combination by the heavy flavor averaging group is uh, 3.9 sigma, and in fact seems to slightly go up with a new result. You also see that the results, the individual results, are consistent with one another there, but they're sort of not maybe all over the place, but they're also there's some dispersion that is there's nothing wrong with that. You expect this on grounds of statistical fluctuations, of course. So now this is the new measurement from last week. Didn't get as much attention as the RK star measurement in April. Um, so LHCB has a new RD star measurement where they have uh, three prong tau decays to reconstruct the tau. Um, and that result is um, I'll put the correct one, that's too high. The, the new three prong result is actually 0 0.285 plus or minus 0 0.019. So it's somewhat lower than the world average. And in fact, by itself is only, I think, about one and a half sigma above the standard model. Um, that's the new LHGP average. Uh, you can also do a world average. They don't show this here. So HVAC, I think, has not produced one yet. I didn't check the last few days, though. And uh, But LHCP has done their own naive, they call this naive world average um, for RD star. So they say this is now 3.4 sigma from the standard model, and I think it used to be 3.4 sigma from the standard model, so that's the same. And for their naive combination of RD and RD star, they say that it's 4.1 sigma. I would have to see what HFAC says. But basically, um, although that is a little bit lower than the previous world average, the, uh, the error bar basically also goes down somewhat. You can draw your own conclusions, but uh, in any case, that's, that's where we are now. Um, also, I should say, I will say this, I <laughs> will write this on the board again, but uh, the size of the effect in the most uh, favored interpretation 
is that this is about a, uh, so at a rate level, I can say this is about a 25% a, a excess over the standard model. And uh, in the most economical explanation at the amplitude level, that means it's about 10% effect. It's possible that it's possible that this is just a bunch of statistical fluctuations and yeah, the true value is the number one. People don't seem to like this anomaly as much as the RK RK star, but if you just take the data and combine it and so on, it's similarly significant than what you get from RK and RK star. So then the other anomalies here I want to mention in B physics are the rare BDK anomalies, which have been much more widely um, discussed. Uh, so this is one of many global fits uh, that people make. The fit is in a plane of two Wilson coefficients. I will review that briefly um, on the board. So, uh, but basically the standard model here is at this black cross and uh, the best fit is somewhere else. Um, that is of course not the same as saying that the standard model has a bad p-value. I mean, that's a different question, but you can study that too. But basically, so what goes into this is uh, various different kinds of measurement. For example, this banana shape here is due to branching ratio measurements, which seem to be lower than the standard model predicts. And then this purple here is primarily due to um, measurements of angular distributions in B to K star mu mu decays. The K star particle is seen as a K pi, so that's a four body final state, and you have three angles and the invariant mass of the, the lepton. So you, uh, you can, you have basically many observables in that one decay mode. Um, so I should say, I have written it here, this plot here does not include the new RK star measurement yet, so that is from um, uh, March or so. Right, the new measurement is the one here on the right, and that goes together, uh, is in a slightly different class, so basically up here we're talking about um, B to S mu mu decays primarily, and we always have uh, to su we always have to varying degrees normalization uncertainties, uh, which include hadronic physics. There are also additive uncertainties of a sort of hadronic QCD uh, kind, which are rather uncertain. Whereas here, that is RK. Here, RK is a ratio, simply a ratio of branching ratios for B to K mu mu relative to B to K E E, so mu plus mu minus to E plus E minus, in which uh, these uh, to a very good accuracy these uncertainties cancel out. So in the standard model here, you would expect one, and that black cross here is uh, the LHCB measurement from 2014, and that's about two and a half sigma below, and it's also in absolute terms, it's 25% below. Standard model is, again, not a, not a small effect, but you're talking here about the loop level, uh, standard model loop level process. So it's there are many more <coughs> possibilities here to explain this with new physics. And, uh, and then finally, this April, um, LHCB published a measurement where instead of a K on in the final state they look at a K star, long anticipated measurement, and uh, so here on the horizontal line is the dilepton the mass, uh, same is true here, I didn't say it. it, this here is the blow up, it's just the region to the left of, of here, that is shown on the right, but for a K star, again, branching ratio for B meson to K star mu plus mu minus normalized to branching ratio for B to K star E plus E minus. Again, in the standard model, you expect something close to one. In the lowest spin, actually expect something uh, significantly below one. These are various theory predictions. You see the errors are very small, and they also all agree. The red one actually was revised. It's not, well, it was in better agreement with the others. And, uh, and here you see the experimental value. So again, these are about 25% and about two uh, sigma maybe 30% and about two sigma below, two, two and a half sigma each below the standard model prediction. Uh, finally, I will not talk about it, but I just, I want to mention that there's also a tension in, in Kions. Uh, there is a CP, uh, uh, the uh, fam very old <laughs> observable, a epsilon prime over epsilon, which quantifies direct CP violation in K long to pi pi decays. That's been measured for some time with uh, bit more than 10% accuracy by two different experiments. And uh, now, uh, since about two years ago, we have basically uh, standard model predictions with controlled errors due to progress in lattice QCD. And uh, so that discrepancy here is at a level of about three sigma. 
I'm not going to talk more about this today, but I'm happy to talk uh, more uh, privately. Uh, it's 1.9, it's not much. It's 1.9. Yeah, yes. the interesting yeah. thing is, yeah, so the central values here are an order of magnitude apart. It's not a typo. Okay, so I think at this point I should stop showing slides and, and go to the requested Blackboard presentation. So now, I must say I'm not primarily, I don't think of myself as a BSM model builder, and, but I realize that most of you are. And so I hope I'm striking here the right level and I'm neither boring you nor uh, giving too much detail, but I suggest that you simply interrupt me if you want to have more or less detail on something. I will also be here for this week and next week, so I'm plenty of time to discuss. So, right, so first let me begin with summarizing the anomalies. Um, so anomalies in flavor as of June 2017. So the first observable that I showed you, the first two observables that I talked about were RD and RD star. And I want to draw the standard model uh, diagram, Feynman diagram for the standard model short distance uh, physics that causes them. So that's uh, a three level W exchange in the case of RD and RD star. So here we're comparing the case with a tau to that with a muon or an electron. Um, you can also compare the muon and the electron. There's actually one uh, paper on that that seems to be consistent B2 with <coughs> B to C. Yes, absolutely. Thank you. So it's a B to C tau nu decays, one of the leading B to C lepton and neutrinos is one of the leading B decays. Um, what is the theory status on this? If you ask me, should I believe this? So here, this is negligible for the next few years. Will be ne negligible. The size of the effect is uh, plus 25 percent. It's an enhancement over the standard model. And the significance of the two combined is about four sigma. The size of the effect is on the At the rate level, so for the observable, yeah. Of order that then. It's not exactly the same in both, and of course there are error bars attached to them. So Right, so then the other we can also look at lepton uh, flavor ratios for uh, rare decay, so that's RK and RK star, where the subscript uh, uh, describes the final states. So these are lepton flavor ratios up here, and these are also lepton flavor ratios. And uh, so these are rare processes, they're loop induced, so let me remind you what the diagrams are that are contributing to them. So these are penguin diagrams with charm and top. In principle also up quark, but that's uh, almost negligible here because of the CKM hierarchy. Um, so let's pretend that VUB is zero here. Uh, of course in the phenomenology you take that into account that is straightforward. Relatively straightforward. Okay, so you have a, a penguin diagram which converts the B to an S. Um, and both of this, charm and top, are actually important. So both of them are sort of roughly half half. Uh, there are also box diagram contributions like that. Okay. Uh, again, here, um, I'm claiming that the theory errors for these observables is at present negligible. So 
So we talk about something like a uh, percent or so theory, uncertainty is a percent or two, uh, conservatively. The size of the effect here is of order minus 25%, so it's a reduction of what we expect in this relative to what we expect in the standard model. And the significance, if you just take the three numbers that have been measured here, one for RK, two for RK star, um, then sorry. So uh, then again, we, we arrive at, at about four sigma. Um, right, so then uh, the uh, other rare KDK anomalies that have been talked about, uh, P5 prime, I think everybody has heard of this. There's also the good old forward backward symmetry, which contributes maybe a little bit to uh, the claims that there is an anomaly and also branching ratios contribute. I, I, well, I'm going to come back to that, to the, un uh, to the structure of these. Um, right, so diagrams here are the same, same diagrams, but we are now not taking lepton flavor ratios, but instead uh, we're looking uh, primarily at angular distributions. <coughs> Going to angular distributions also reduces um, the sensitivity to hadronic uh, uncertainties, but, uh, uh, but much less so than uh, taking the lepton flavor ratios. So uh, here there are considerable theory systematics, so there are form factor uncertainties. And there are uh, also actually long distance charm contributions which are uncertain, very uncertain. Uh, right, so this charm quark here uh, in the loop can have a wide range of virtualities um, and uh, the lower they are, the more uncertain they are, basically. The more strongly coupled, the strong interactions that correct all of this are. So now here, since we talk about an angular distribution, I cannot really say that the angular distribution goes up or goes down by something. So here I should say what the effect is at the amplitude level or more precisely at the Wilson coefficient level. And as I said, I, as I promised, I'm promising again, I will explain what that means precisely. So this is an order of 25% reduction of a particular Wilson coefficient, which is called C9. And to be precise, C9 at, at the B mass, or at it doesn't vary that dramatically, but so let's say C9 at 5 GeV is reduced by about that amount. The significance of this, now there are two people disagree because it depends very strongly on what you do here. I would say something like two sigma maybe. And then the epsilon prime over epsilon I had here doesn't fit, uh, but I should do it because I mentioned it. I, will I, I promise not to talk about it. I will not really discuss it in any more detail, but it should be on the list because I want to draw the diagrams for that. Uh, and I'll give you the size of the effect. <coughs> so that's a, uh, a KDK. So here we talk about a strange 2D uh, transition. So we can go here through a top W loop. Uh, also charm. Top or charm. And then here we can have a gluon or a photon, and both are important, and then here that can split into an up or anti-up, or a down or anti-down, uh, or a strange, an anti-strange pair. And uh, so basically then this here gets hadronized into some complicated way into a pi pi state. And uh, so the main uh, theory systematics here come from uh, a matrix element between a two pion state and a k on state of operators like Q 
bar q d bar s for fermion operators, which you basically get from integrating out these things here perturbatively. And these hadronic matrix that are meant for a long time with two pions in the final state. Uh, it is important to have also, for example, strong phases of the final state here under control for a long time. This was not really tractable uh, with first principles. And there were no small expansion parameters here in this problem. So, uh, uh, but that's now changed. So this is really now uh, becoming established. Still is very much cutting edge, but becoming established lattice physique. So the anomaly here is of order three sigma at the moment. That could, for example, be a statistical fluctuation in the lattice uh, uh, matrix element calculations. The size of the effect, if you look at the central values, is quite big. It's an enhancement of about 500% to uh, maybe 1,000%. Um, however, one should say in this case, the Sana model uh, is really extremely suppressed in, in, in multiple ways. Loop, CKM hierarchy, uh, cancellation between two different contributions. Right, I mean, yes. That doesn't depend on that. The significance here depends primarily on what you do about the theory systematics. So that's my personal two sigma. Right, so it's a <laughs> the significance here is systematics dominated, not theory, theoretical systematics dominated. Well, there are other anomalies. I mean, there's the famous G mu minus two. I'm could I have yeah. Etc. I'm not sure if you want to call this lepton, and if it is now flavor. I mean, sometimes people say that this is lepton universality violating if you compare it to the electron dipole mu minus or because it scales with the mass. But yeah. Um, just to say that some of the models that have been put on the market to explain this then can also give the right size for the G mu minus two. So, any any other comments or questions on this? Anything important that I've forgotten on the list? Now, the next thing I want to talk about RD and RD star. And uh, the, m the main reason is that because, I mean, if unless you discard this, then it you have to explain how you can discard a four sigma discrepancy if where you have no, <laughs> as a theorist, where you have no theoretical way of explaining it away, then this is probably the leading beyond the standard model physics effect that we're seeing here. You know, if, you, if you say you believed all of these anomalies, that's, that's by far the largest effect. So maybe it should be talked about first. So it's three level in the SM, so it's also three level BSM uh, or strong coupling. And uh, now in the standard model, um, I've already have the diagram here. I don't need to uh, copy the diagram again. But you know that the W just couples to left-handed quarks and leptons. So this diagram gives you uh, an effective operator, which is C left bar gamma mu B left uh, tau left bar gamma mu new left, only with left-handed particles. And the BSM is uh, order 25%. Now, there in the beyond the standard model physics, a priori does not have to uh, give the same effective operator. There are other operators that you can write. So there are, for example, operators where you would have not no gamma mu here. So you have C right, B left, which is what you would get from a Higgs, a heavy Higgs exchange or so, or tensor, sigma mu, sigma mu. Uh, however, they don't seem to describe the data as well. Um, uh, uh, so for several reasons. So I want to argue that the most likely, also maybe not the only possible one, but, but sort of probably by now the, the only realistic one. Uh, I would argue that the BSM should generate the same operator. I'm, I'm not the first person to argue this. 
The reason for this is, first, if you, do, if you just gen modify the coefficient of this operator, you're benefiting from interference with the standard model. And that boosts the rate. And you then need uh, a change of the amplitude of the coefficient of that operator of uh, plus 10% now, including the newest LHGB uh, number. And uh, also, this operator here gives a better agreement with the differential decay distribution. So in addition to RD, RD star, uh, B factors have also shown uh, the uh, you know, distribution of the uh, you know, lepton energy and, and, and things like that, yeah, and, and spin. So. There's a lot of? Well, you may be the expert, so more the authority than I on this. I mean, the, the arrow bars are big, right? And then there are many bins, and I, I haven't done a, a fit myself. But okay. there are papers by Ligeti and collaborators, for example. Yeah, I, I don't disagree. So I'm also I, I want to be a bit cautious here. I don't want to claim that maybe <laughs> maybe favored. It's maybe favored that. It so basically, what I'm trying to say: this is the most economical. This is certainly an economical explanation, which is consistent with everything that you're seeing here. If you choose another operator, you need a larger coefficient. Uh, you have to check whether this holds. And you have to also check whether, for example, the B sub C lifetime uh, uh, does not get too short. So whether the B if the B sub C width doesn't get too large. So and this operator does not have any so problem. The combination of the two ratios, right? For instance, with the charge takes, it's difficult to explain both R D and R D star at the same time. That's actually even the first Baba paper had I mean, basically, the reference is sort of that I have read on this recently. That's here, Ligeti et al., 2015. There's also a paper from 2016, mm -hmm. but the 2015 paper makes this comparison between the operators. And then here for the B sub C width, there are also several papers, but one that you might read is you to Grinstein, Grinstein and collaborators um, from last year. You can ask now what kind of new physics, what kind of media this can make this. So there is, uh, I think, a Bell measurement of the muon to electron ratio for these. And that is, I think, consistent with the start with one, with about 10%. Yeah, yeah, less and not much less, I think. Second? Could both of them be yeah. low? That well, is, so you want, if you wanted to put the whole effect in the muon and the electrons <coughs> and, uh, and not in the towers, could you do that? Um, well, the thing is, you, you are then, uh, you know, at, at, at the individual rate level, you're sensitive to form factor normalization. So how precisely are these B2D star form factors now known? They're known from lattice QCD calculations. 
um, which have some statistical errors and have also generally some systematic issues maybe so I I, I can't I can't answer it it's a, it's a good question I mean it may Uh, there's heavy quarks. So for are you talking about RD and RD star? Or are you talking yes. about, but if you're asking whether the effect is in yes, so light leptons or in tau's? Well so yeah. Only on VCB, so you have to Yeah, so if VCB, if the conclusion is that VCB, because of this, has a 5% error, then you would, then, then here the amplitude would also have 5%. The amplitude that we need here is 10%, so you can then not put it entirely in there. Not okay. It's less than 5%. I, I, <laughs> hmm. Okay, um, I already see that, I probably have to speed up. So what possible mediators have been studied uh, and are possible? So if you ex want a tree-level mediator, then you have the following possibilities. You can have a W prime. And that's now assuming that I want to get this operator. Okay, if you want other operators, then you have more possibilities. So that's uh, a uh, mediator with baryon and lepton number zero and with electric charge one. And uh, it can be an SU2 triplet or singlet, so T can be equal zero or one. Total weak isospin. Th but then you can also have leptoquarks. So you could have a vector leptoquark. And again, if you want to have these chiralities, then um, that must have Q, there's only one possibility for the both the charge and the hypercharge. This has to be equal to plus two thirds. Again, it can be weak uh, singlet or triplet. So here you get an antineutrino and a charm in this way. And then you can also have a scalar leptoquark. vector leptoquark here and then here scalar leptoquark now uh, Matthias left the room but that's one that he has popularized <laughs> also among others um, and I think this exhausts the poly possibilities now Y there are a couple of uh, generic uh, consequences in, in each case. So uh, because uh, uh, really uh, all the particles here are parts of SU2 left doublets, um, there will be correlated effects in other processes. Um, how precisely they will be correlated is depends on which of the three uh, mediators and which of the choices you make here, so which of the six possibilities uh, you choose. There are papers on this which will give you the expressions in each case. So we have SU2 doublets. That means we get correlated effects elsewhere. Um, and so for example, you can look at uh, Grinstein 
Alonso and Martin Kamalic. Uh, 1505.05164 um, which gives you the matching of, of each case on, on two uh, dimension six operators. Um, some of the other processes that are important include uh, so obviously B to S tau plus tau minus um, which uh, which will be very good uh, for Bell so Bell 2 will We'll be able to study this very well. LHB uh, for LHB is very difficult. Um, B to S uh, new tau um, uh, anti new tau. So B basically, for example, gives B to K B to K plus nothing. B to K star plus nothing. There are constraints from B factories. Um, Possibly B to S mu plus mu minus. Um, that, that's, that's not uh, so clear that you get this here from a doublet structure um, alone, and you do not get it based on that alone, but uh, people have uh, looked for that because for models where you get that, because then this might give you RK, RK star, uh, P5 prime, and so on. So. Uh, Possibly desirable. Uh, also, depending, you know, depending on the flavor structure of your model, you might get uh, then effects uh, uh, in B to D transitions or even in S to D transitions. So I think nobody has made a model yet which explains all of these and also epsilon prime over epsilon anomaly. But you could try. Um, I'm not sure why those all should come from, <laughs> from one part single particle, but good. Possibly also, uh, especially if you try to tie this here together with B to S mu mu, uh, you might also get a lepton flavor violation so uh, that uh, was emphasized by by Glashow and collaborators. Uh, where did I put uh, the blackboard? I add in the Wischer. Okay, so the details of all of this are model dependent. But for example, you could look at the following thing. So let's look at some quark doublet, and then let's look at uh, a leptoquark mediator, where we get a doublet like this. So that's, say, the, the middle case here, if it was a vector, and then here and here. And then there are many ways to choose our doublet in generation space. So uh, this doublet could be uh, some superposition of the uh, bottom, the left-handed bottom, and its SU2 partner, and uh, of the left-handed charm, and its SU2 partner, and the lepton doublet could similarly be some superposition of the uh, tau left and its SU2 partner and the uh, mu left and its SU2 partner so the neutrino, so the tau and the mu and the, and the mu and the new mu here the b left prime is just uh, the usual thing like vub times uh, u left plus vcb times uh, c left plus 
VTB times B left, etc. Um, so for example, one thing you can do is you can uh, here um, set theta to, uh, to zero, so you take as a doublet precisely that doublet that contains the bottom, and then you get uh, automatically, uh, for example, up here, you automatically get uh, uh, VCB, a factor of VCB here. Right, so you just need a single doublet. So just this alone here would be enough to, to give you uh, the B to C tau mu tau um, uh, amplitude with a factor of VCB that you also have in the standard model. If you do it this way, then basically the 10% effect tells you that um, sort of coupling squared over mass squared of the particle needs to be about 10% of uh, uh, SU2, SU2 coupling in the standard model squared over MW squared, you're ending up with a couple of hundred GeV for the mediator and then you have trouble with uh, sort of at least borderline <laughs> problems with uh, uh, LHG searches on leptoquarks. But uh, yeah, so, so that's, that's one of the things. Another, th uh, another um, uh, kind of observable you uh, have to look at is and which gives you constraints uh, is you can look at BB bar 2 tau plus tau minus so uh, if you do what I just said just take this one here then uh, and similar for leptons you just couple to the tau then you will get um, contributions to this which are problematic as pointed been pointed out for example by Isidori and uh, recent work by Kamenik. And um, and if you if you do not do this alignment, if you allow here for uh, a non-zero mixing angle, that's a situation where then uh, you uh, you start getting uh, you know possibly. Uh, large uh, contribution to this one, for example. And uh, if you switch on the leptonic mixing angle here, then you will get lepton flavor violation. Of course, you don't have to have that. Right, there's for moreover, there's a stringent constraint which was just pointed out last year. Uh, and in fact, the tension from the following observable, you can look at the purely leptonic uh, decay, or you can look at the tau to mu, mu nu bar decay, and uh, take the ratio of that to the mu to e nu nu bar decay, and that is measured to be 1.0022 with a uh, small error, and... Uh, hmm? I'm at 45? Okay, so then I have to to wrap up in a moment, but this is the end of this section. I want you to just discuss this constraint. So uh, this was pointed out by Ferrolio, Paradisi, Patori. And um, so uh, why does this, ha why, why this is a problem here potentially? Because quite model independently, if you have this uh, four quark operator there and you uh, uh, take note of the doublet structure, then you get a diagram like this, where here you can have a left-handed top and a left-handed bottom, then the left-handed top can flip to a right-handed top and back to a left-handed top, and then here you get a W out, and then the W goes to mu nu and that's proportional to the Higgs vacuum expectation value. And uh, the effect here for the kind of size of BSM coefficient that you need uh, is, is larger than the deviation from one here and goes in the other direction generally. So you need to tune here.
you need to tune this model independent contribution where you take the same operator and uh, and close the loop against some direct UV contribution to this process. So you need to tune this against a UV contribution of order 10 percent. So I was having another brief section on the rare electronicity case, but I guess I shouldn't start that now. Um, it's messier. Suffice it to say, uh, you can't really discuss it without some discussion of, of ironic uncertainties. Also on the on the BSM side, there are many more <laughs> possibilities because now loop level new physics can also do it. Uh, and uh, so you can't really give a quick discussion. Uh, again, I'm happy to uh, talk more you know, in private or in the coffee room with you about this. So and, and I guess it's the best if I then stop with this blackboard presentation. Uh, I wanted to, yeah, let me do that maybe. I, w I had some slides on, on the rare BD case, but maybe that's a good point. Um, need it, but just need to adjust it. Should we leave it like this? <coughs> what I don't understand is uh, it hasn't detected. Uh, ah, maybe it was. Okay, good. Excellent. Good, so that we've seen. That we've seen. Um, so a couple more so that, that we've also seen. Uh, this is something that I will now discuss. Um, here this is uh, one thing that you can learn from the RK star measurement. So that's just again the RK as a function of k squared standard model prediction and the data. And here the different colors here correspond to different kinds of BSM Wilson coefficients, different operators that can explain it with in particular different chiralities of the muon. Uh, field, if you assume that the effect here, uh, BSM effect here specifically affects the muonic decay, you don't have to do that. You can also explain it with the electron. Uh, and then here you see that RK star can differentiate between them. So this is the case where you have right handed muons. So that's fine here, but uh, but is basically strongly disfavored now by the RK star measurement. Uh, this red one here would be a pure C9 effect that also doesn't work very well. This here is a mix of C9. So this is this blue here is a, a purely left-handed muon effect, and then this uh, orange one would be purely axial muon coupling. Um, here you can also look at the uh, at the uh, this again shows uh, this for the uh, middle bin uh, correlation between the changes in the middle bin and the RK here for different Wilson coefficients. So uh, data-wise, we're down here. And then here, this is what you get for a global fit to C9 and C10. I promise to define C9 and C10. Let me just say it in words for those who don't know. So the operator, or let me write it. So let me write that one thing. The operator Q9 is. Uh, S bar left, gamma mu b left, times uh, mu bar, so q9 for muons, which is what, what we're assuming here to explain the new physics effect. We get uh, S bar left, gamma mu b left, mu bar, gamma mu mu, so a vector, a vectorial coupling to the uh, muons, and then q10 with coefficient c10 has again S left bar gamma mu b left and then here we have mu bar gamma mu gamma 5 mu 
this decomposition is useful for incorporating QCD corrections and it's actually also in the standard model uh, such that this one basically comes from Z uh, penguins and this one here comes basically from photon penguins. Um, so the point here is just these uh, measurements together for the, the, the last bin here, LHB was always talking about that they would measure it, now they don't have a result for it, so that's why only three. You combine them, you get already something which is uh, quite significantly a non-zero, so there's a 3.78 sigma discrepancy uh, just here, and then the plot shows the best fit. Then you can actually look at the include the BS to mu mu, which is also theoretically uncontroversially clean, and it, and and that's actually perfectly consistent. It narrows down the region somewhat. Um, so there have been a couple of papers doing this, and that's that's these pictures are from my own, which uh, they all appeared very soon after the measurement was published. Um, now one thing that these fits seem to prefer. So if you now say four sigma is good enough for me to actually contemplate new physics and say what is the new physics like, then you see that uh, you have a big degeneracy along this diagonal, but you're significantly away from zero in this direction. So in this direction here, you're changing the coefficient of the uh, combination of these two, which involves just the left and the muon. So there is here evidence, uh, I would say, for new physics, uh, which if you interpret, if you require the new physics to be in the muons, you will be led to the conclusion that there should be new physics uh, affecting left-handed muons, coupling left-handed muons to left-handed bottom and strange. For the right-handed one, you don't know. It's not that the data tell you that it's not there. Then you can now include all this angular distribution stuff, including P5 prime, and you know it's consistent. If you assume that that's you know that's perfectly con possible that that is a muon-specific effect as well, and you can even include electron angular analysis data. There's much less statistics and, uh, and fewer measurements on this. And then I think this I better don't discuss now because I have to go to something else. I want to just make one more point that. Uh, this is the here the coordinates are different. So on the horizontal axis, uh, I'm assuming now a I'm I'm I'm, uh, I'm looking now at the uh, coefficient of that combination of operators which only involves the left and the muon. But on the vertical axis, I'm assuming a lepton flavor universal uh, contribution to C9, which is what you get from photon penguins. For example, beyond the standard model physics, there are many ways you can have a B and an S and another particle, for example, charm anti charm or some or, or tau anti tau or something, and you can contract this into a loop with a photon. So the new physics would then give you a lepton flavor universal contribution to C9 and possibly also a lepton flavor non universal one to C left muon, and that also gives a very good fit. And I think that's my last slide. So thank you very much for your attention. I fear it's gone. Okay, no, you, uh, you just said that uh, if you measure uh, directly, you have a four single effect, but in the asymmetries, the effect load goes down. For B to S mu mu? Yes. So I said the significance from this here alone is about four sigma. Okay. Uh, and let me see what the p value was here. Yeah, still. Yeah, so it's it's just under four sigma, no, no, and the the significance I, I stated for the angular distribution uh, was not that was just for that, right? Okay. So not everything combined. If you combine it all together, I think it's still around four sigma, okay. but that depends a bit on again what you assume about you know heavy to light form factors, ratios of form factors, long distance charm contributions. Uh, on all of which there are some, with the present methods to calculate or estimate them, there are some irreducible 
uh, you know, some uncontrolled systematics, basically. Like light consum rules, for example, have systematics which are very hard to estimate it. Yeah, I think. Yes? Yeah, so I'm I'm not sure if I can really give a very qualified answer on this, but I would say for the for the taus, I mean, in general for the RD and RD star measurements, uh, one thing that that's that's not so nice is that uh, basically the same, so far as I understand, in the, the same data set is used to determine uh, so it's a kind of a joint fit, so that, that to determine both the uh, background model or, or determine parameters in there and uh, uh, and also the signal so it's kind of a joint joint fit to uh, that certainly was true for the for the uh, b factory measurements and i think that's also to some extent true for the lhcb measurements so uh, you you don't have a <laughs> sideband in the signal region and you, you cannot i think presently completely uh, disentangle the two so uh, i yeah the uh, I'm not sure whether that's now, in the opinion of the experimentalists, the main systematic, but it is something that to an to me looks uh, uh, looks suboptimal. For the A RK and RK star, the main source of systematics comes from the electrons in the final state. Um, they they radiate a lot more photons, and with the way the uh, LHCb experiment is set up, that causes various kinds of of problems for them. So they they try to, uh, so for example, I think they have, for each of the electrons, there's about a 50% probability that it radiates some photons, uh, uh, so that so they see some extra deposit in, in, in some detector cell, and then they try to uh, recombine that, and uh, it, it's a complicated thing, and so on. But they get, for example, sometimes misreconstructions in uh, electron invariant mass in this way, and uh, uh in most of the cases, that will give them the wrong uh, B mass, so it doesn't, you know, uh, but it, it could mean that an event is not counted, it should be counted, it could be, and, and so on. So, I, I mean, at the end of the day, they get, uh, they get uh, basically, um, you know, for example, an acceptance function for, for B to K E plus C minus, which is, you know, Q square dependent, and they, uh, they they make uh, for the binning they're using. I mean here they're making a cut for RK star. For example, they're making a cut at 0 0.045 here for RK. They haven't gone that far down, um, so they will wrongly exclude and include some events. Um, they so this bin migration they're claiming a tiny systematic for RK for the RK star measurement. Um, that 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 seems, <laughs> um, yeah. Surprising. I mean, they say something like a one percent uh, attribute, something like a one percent systematic to that. But that is something that, that you might worry about. Now, for R the RK measurement, you also have this problem um, that's been out for three years. There have been uh, people looking into that. In particular, there's a paper by Isidorian collaborators where they, uh, where they looked into you know soft photon uh, photon emission, and they claim that they very accurately reproduce. Uh, 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 the estimates that, that LHCb has. So, uh, so that's why I said. Uh, so basically, when I said that the uh, the uncertainties in the RK and RK star measurement, at least in the RK measurement, is of, of what a percent level that includes those reassessments that people have made. Or does it not look 
So left right sim model uh, specifically I'm not sure why I uh, So first of all, I should say that, uh, I have said that, uh, I mean, this is maybe not the best. I uh, know oh this is a fine plot. So basically, first of all, I should say that this plot does not tell you that the effect has to be only with left-handed muons, right? So it could also, for example, be uh, a pure C9 effect. And uh, so, but basically, yeah. So, I mean, there are, there are loop level the explanations, which there are more, <laughs> and then the tree level explanations are primarily Z prime or lepto quark. Um, with the Z prime, you get the usual uh, <laughs> uh, problem that you get then contributions to be S, B is bar mixing. That then tells you that the coupling to the muon should be uh, probably much larger than the coupling to the BS. So, um, one uh, way this has been implemented is in a paper which you may know or may not by uh, Alpman Sofa and, and, uh, and, and, and Pospilov and, and collaborators. And they basically gauge uh, the, the diff, uh, they gauge uh, the uh, L mu minus L tau, okay, the lep the, uh, this difference of lepto numbers. And that uh, is anomaly free and it passes various, I mean, for example, if you gauge the uh, electron number, then you will, you will have a problem with, with lab uh, observables. So, uh, so that can give it. So then, on the because you then have an or can have an order one coupling uh, uh, specifically to muons. Uh, you, uh, in fact, that they predict they had that model for the p five prime anomaly before the RK measurement. So um, <laughs> that predicted the RK uh, at the at the correct level. Uh, uh, so, so that works, and this uh, now because you, you still have the freedom to rescale your coupling and your Z prime mass, so you can have a very wide range of Z prime masses like from I don't know below 100 GV with small couplings to 25 uh, GV maybe or something like that. And with the lepto quark, okay, you you immediately get rid of the BSB spar mixing constraint, and uh, then there are several possibilities, and uh, I think. So, so they all. If you just want again, if you just want to explain RK, I think each of them will be fine for some values of the of the couplings. I mean, none of them, I think, comes out of some. Uh, well, I mean, if you now ask, you know, I mean, if you now you can say that, do, do should you believe any are any of these models nice? Uh, or do they any do anything about the naturalness problem? After all, you could argue that naturalness uh, is perhaps the main reason why you would expect new physics in, in, in flavor physics. Um, so the the lepto you can get lepto quarks with uh, which uh, give you effects which are large enough for this uh, rare B decay anomalies from pseudo Goldstone boson uh, constructions. So there, there are some work from Ben Gripaios from some years ago, which many of you probably know. Um, with that primes, I think generally they always seem a bit like epicycles to any other to some other model. Yeah. All right. So let's thank Sebastian again.